We now start to get into the Nightfall Saga proper with Bane's secret origins in Batman Vengeance of Bane. This is written by Chuck Dixon, with pencils by Graham Nolan, inks by Eduardo Barrett, colors by Adrian Roy, letters by Bill Oakley, and is edited by Scott Peterson and Danny O'Neill. We open in Santa Prisca, several years prior, with an attempted coup inspired by the uprising in Cuba, but one that failed. We're introduced to our point of view character, Zombie, who was sentenced to Pina Duro for 30 years and is working in the prison infirmary. Because he's assigned to the infirmary, he gets to see Bane's mother and Bane as a child. Bane's mother was sentenced as an accessory to her husband's actions in the uprising, and as Bane is the a male child, he is convicted for the crimes of his father, who he never knew. Zombie watches over them until Bane's mother dies, and Bane, now six years old, has moved the general population, where Zombie, for reasons that are unexplained, can't help them. In the general population, he's protected by a prisoner named Trog, but not well, as Bane falls from a high level of the prison, and while in a coma, half hallucinates and half dreams his future self. After recovering from his coma, Bane kills an inmate who tormented him on his first night in prison and taunts the warden, causing him to be put in solitary for ten years. Well, solitary confinement is something of an understatement. Bane is basically stuck in a hole that floods daily, with no human contact and basically no food, save for what fish get into the cell, for ten years. And he survives. When Bane emerges, he is something of a hero to the rest of the prisoners. Bane then meets another inmate, Bird. Bird is originally from Gotham and has a sympathetic, possibly even supernatural, relationship with birds. Bird teaches Bane how to read, and teaches him about Gotham. With the ability to read, Bane becomes a polyglot and a polymath. And through all of this, Bane also learns of Batman. It is around this time that the Junta, who runs Santa Prisca, starts experimenting on prisoners with venom. Bane survives the early dose of the drug, along with surgical implants to put it directly into his brain. And during this, at Bane's behest, Zombie learns how to reproduce the drug. Once all is in readiness, Bane then escapes. He suppresses his vitals, so he's mistaken for dead, so he gets tossed out for the sharks. Bane then kills the sharks, breaks into the prison, and holds the warden hostage for a helicopter that he, Trog, Bird, and Zombie can use to go to the U.S. and to Gotham. At this point, after arriving in Gotham, after kicking the warden out of the helicopter over the ocean along the way, Bane and his companions prepare his mask and injector, and now Bane, as we know him, is complete. We could probably stop there, but the story goes a little longer to see the start of Bane's plan. They began by visiting Jimmy the Nose, a gangster who sold out Bird. They kill him, and as we learn after the fact from Harvey Bullock and Renee Montoya, with particular brutality. This in turn draws out Commissioner Gordon and Batman. Bane and his colleagues see Batman approach, and his followers want to take Batman down now, but Bane wants to wait. Batman meets Gordon, who suspects the Manklin brothers, as does Batman. Batman goes to shake them down, and Bane follows. Batman realizes this, but he is not sure who's following him, and he can't quite catch a glimpse of Bane. Batman ultimately finds the Manklins and takes them down, while Bane takes down several others. And while Batman refrains from using daily, refrains from using deadly force like normal, even saving one of the Manklins from being knocked off a ledge to his death, Bane does kill, even murdering some who Batman spared. Finally, Bane makes himself known to Batman. They don't fight, they just talk. You do not kill. That is strange. A creature cloaked in nightmare. A figure of terror in a city of terror. And yet, you will not break the Sixth Commandment. You're not with the Manklins. You're not with anyone I know. Who are you? You will know my name one day. And on that day, you will beg for mercy. You're threatening me. Get in line. You will scream my name. Scream it! The GCPD bursts in, but Batman and Bane are both long gone, leaving both leaving the unconscious but living, Batman's handiwork, and the dead, Bane's. Montoya suspects Batman is responsible for the deaths, and he's finally crossed that line, but Bullock isn't so sure. Bane's followers ask him why he let Batman get away, but... That is not Bane's goal, not yet. 
That Bane must understand Gotham to rule it, and once he grocks, my words, not Bane's, Batman, he, then he will know Gotham, and then finally, Gotham will be his. Bane's introduction is an engaging story. The best members of Batman's rogue gallery are defined by the comparison to Batman himself, and Bane is no exception. Batman traveled the world and sought out the best teachers in pretty much everything to become the man he is now. And he could do that because he came from a family with wealth and privilege. Bane, by contrast, came from nothing and had no options for travel. He was literally locked down to one place. He built the person he is based on that, by being stuck in no place with no option to go anywhere, and thus, thus when he learned of the options for being outside, he ate that up with a spoon and developed himself to become a person who could take, basically take that for himself, take the world for himself. So, this introduction of Bane does a tremendous job of setting up how and why he is a threat, and in turn setting expectation for him as a character leading up to the storyline to come, setting him up as a rival to Batman, and in a way a direct and clear contrast to Batman. Now next time, we cover the start of the storyline directly before Nightfall as Batman takes on Black Mask. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed the show, please like and subscribe. And also consider backing my Patreon. Patreon backers get episodes up to one week early of this show and in future Let's Plays. Also, please consider backing my coffee. Uh, toss me a few bucks also helps support the show, and it's not a monthly obligation or anything like that.